Snow Patrol and Run on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Stephen Merchant and Carl Bilkins. Yeah. That's three for one. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Exciting. Exciting. Um, Oh, news, 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 news. Uh, breaking news <laughs> is that there's only two more weeks of us before we have to go away on a little extended break again. So, um, can't give any more details yet. We don't know when we can come back because, uh, we don't know. What we're doing, we're going to, um, America. We're doing the Golden Globes and then we're going to watch the Office Pilot being filmed. Yes. And then we've got bits, I'm, I'm doing a bit of a tour. So it'll be sort of the summer times, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it like they they care. Oh, they don't give a damn. Do you know what I mean? Don't I sometimes that. think that because um, you think, oh, you don't want to let down the people. You want to keep it consistent. You want to give. You know, but really, I know I like doing this more than anyone listening. Definitely. Do you know what definitely, I mean? Definitely, definitely. I love coming in. I love squeezing Carl's head. Yeah. I love playing some records. You know, I like sort of sitting in the room with you. I know you love it. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing on a Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, we got our Saturdays back though. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, my alarm went off today and I was a bit tired because we, we had a couple of drinks yeah, last night, didn't we? Last night, yeah. Yeah, we, we had, you know, party. We're party animals. Yeah. Um, but, um, oh, I've been looking for an office this week, mm. as you know. And it's so stressful. <sighs> Just walking around, just talking to d agents and but, but uh, right, okay. So my method is this, right? I walk around the area that I want to be in, because uh, I, I don't want to hear anything else. I don't want to, you know what I mean? So I walk around. It, uh, uh, to be fair, it is about a square five hundred yards. Yeah, right. It's sort Your of house is in the centre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I walk, yeah, and uh, so I walk around and look at placards. I go, that's a nice office, and I phone them up. There's loads of different people I'm dealing with, right? And they went, oh, we got one in so and so street. I think it was Fifth Street or something like that. I went, oh yeah, I went on to. So I'll see you there in twenty minutes. I got there. You were there, if you remember. Mm. I looked around and I said to Steve, "It looks all right. There's no, 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 no pawn shops or anything like that, right?" And Steve went, "Well, it is next to a brothel." And I looked, and there on the next thing, like you know, model first floor, uh, Susie, oh three. I went, oh, and I phoned him and I said, "Do you know what? Um, don't bother coming here." He went, no, I said, "No, no," I said, "Because it's next to a brothel." He went, "Yeah." I went, right, okay, just for future reference, I don't want an office literally next to a brothel, <laughs> right? When I go to work, I don't want to walk past prostitutes. Call me old-fashioned, Yeah, right? as you so, go into work, there's a prostitute. Yeah. Morning, morning. Morning, morning. Oh, has she got a cup of tea? Yeah, Starbucks, yeah. <laughs> uh, business good? Yeah, it's a bit slow at the moment. Well, it picks up later this evening, does it really? Good. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I said, I, I said to him, I've got so... So my, my news resolution is being like a little fascist when it comes to business. And, and I said, uh, uh, also future reference, um, um, no, no crack dens and no wild animals in the porch. <laughs> and, uh, I, I just can't believe it. There's always something wrong. We went to one, right? It got there, right? And, uh, a woman said, oh, I'm new here. She didn't, she didn't have, she didn't know what keys she was using. And she went, it's the third floor. And uh, she went, at no point, we won't both get in the lift. I went, right, will you get a desk in the lift? <laughs> Right, she went, I've got a chair in the lift before. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah. just find me an office, Rathbone Place, sort of Percy Street, Charlotte Street, Dean Street. Yeah. Yeah. First or second I'm floor. I'm worried we're gonna get emails from estate agents, phone calls from them. You know what those people are like. But I don't look at the emails. True. <laughs> Fair enough. So, play Fair record. Enough. Sexist. <laughs> Joe Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> Different for girls. Well, he's not in the charts anymore. Oh, I can't, I can't believe it. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, you were talking about renting an office. I'm a little bit intimidated because I'm just at the moment thinking about trying to buy a flat or something because sure. I'm just tired of pissing money down the drain. If I, I know. Yeah. And, um, uh, but I'm just, I'm really petrified. I've put it off and put it off because I just, I'm really gullible. I'm just, when I'm in confronted with anyone in a suit who sort of knows what they're talking about, they can sell me anything, I'm intimidated, it's like, you know, you're supposed to go in there, you're supposed to sort of act like you're the guy with the money, you're the, this is what I want, this is what I want, no, no, no. But I go in there and it's like I'm afraid they're gonna say, clear off, I don't wanna, I don't wanna sell you out, I'm not yeah. interested. Have you, ever, have you ever thought of like, really putting on sort of like some sort of cool air? Like, uh, <laughs> sort of like kicking the door and going, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> is it like, just, you'd be found out in 30 seconds, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you? Exactly. You'd go in there, you'd stub your toe, and they go, what are you kidding about? I can't find your toe, I can't find your toe. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Brilliant. Just tapping yeah. the walls. Yeah, tapping the wall. What's the, uh, what's the rates? What rates? 
I don't know. <laughs> well, this is, do you remember, I don't know if I told you before, I went, I wanted to buy a laptop computer. Yeah. And everyone said, uh, go up Tottenham Court Road. And I was reading, like, magazines and stuff, they were saying, haggle, make sure you haggle, make sure you got, you're planning to haggle, get the best deal you can. And I found a, a shop which was selling the computer I wanted, and I went in there, and I had this whole plan in my mind of what was gonna happen. He was gonna say, like, it's worth this, I'm gonna go, yeah. well, look, I can get it cheaper here, I wanna buy it from you, I'm gonna haggle, da -da. And off I went. So I went in the shop, and uh, I said, yeah, looking for this, uh, interest in this Toshiba. How much is it? He went, oh, it's 1500 quid. I went, sure, sure. Okay. I said, I'll give you 1300. <laughs> he went, it's 1500. Um, I said, sure, but I'm willing to give you 1300. He went, 1500. And I was, I was done already <laughs> because he hadn't even begun to haggle. <laughs> well, I was assuming he'd at least go 1400 and we could start, but nothing. So now yeah. I was screwed. My whole plan went out the window. Yeah. What did you do? Just leave? No, I said to him, I said, the thing is, I can get this computer cheaper down the road, but, you know, I like what you're providing there. I like your service. Uh, I've had good, good, good stuff about you. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I said, I've heard good stuff about you. And he went, I said, uh, seriously, I can walk down the street. I can buy it there for cheap, for like 1400. And he went, well, I'll see you later then. And I was like, right. <laughs> so I, I walked out the place. I said, well, I'm gonna have to leave then. And I walked out the place, and, um, of course I wanted to get it from there, because it was still the cheapest, so I had to walk back in again. I went, yeah, 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 yeah. I've, um, I just had some second thoughts. Listen, I'll tell you what, I'll pay the 1500 can I get a free carry case? He went, the carry case is free anyway. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> Carry case is <laughs> nothing. No, but how much would you charge for that if it was on sale? <laughs> Carry case a tenner. Well, let's just say it is a tenner. Give it to me for free. And he went, no, it's a tenner. And he went, well, you said it was free a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just pathetic. Yeah, that is lovely. For it's for having to walk out making a big statement and then come back in again. Oh. Oh, and, um, dear. So I just, I'm really scared. I just, I feel like I need someone to come with me and do all the talking. You know, know what they're talking about. Because I don't, I'm not going to be able to tell if there's, if there's subsidence or if there's damp or... No, but you don't do that. Don't I? Is that not my responsibility? No, you get a survey done. Sure. And exactly, they charge for that and then the... Yeah, you don't, you don't have to go around doing it yourself. Right. I so could, could I make a statement if I did it myself? <laughs> yeah, this should be alright. Yeah. This is holding all, Steve. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what's a hole in the wall? <laughs> Put some newspaper in that. Chaucer's day, that was the toilet. <laughs> That'd be fine. Carl, oh, you're a second time buyer, aren't you? Bought... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought one in Manchester. Uh, yeah. lost seven grand on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't buy in Manchester. No, it's a good flat, it's just it wasn't, I, I didn't buy it to sort of make money, I thought I was gonna be living there like all my life. And then a job came up here, and it was like, oh. You bought your first flat in Manchester, you assumed you would be living there for the rest of your life. Well, I wasn't in a rush. It's a game Play record, you're an idiot. Hang on a minute, I, so have you got a property portfolio? Have you got the two houses, Nick? No, oh, I've got rid of that one. Oh, you sold that one? Got this a seven thousand pound loss. Got this flat, I'll tell you something that is interesting. Hold on though. What? Um, seven thousand pound lost. Yeah. It, it was flat in Manchester, but it could only cost about eight grand anyway. <laughs> right, Steve, something you, they, they do now, right, they've got to do by law when you're buying, right? I was looking at one in London, right? Um, it's haunted, they've got to tell you now. Right, don't talk shit. I'm it's telling you now. Record. I'm would, telling you now. Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as ghosts. That, if that, that is ridiculous if that appears on a, a legal document. That right, if there's ridiculous. anyone who sells flats and that, does that for a living. Yeah. Right? Email in. Yeah. Because I'm telling you now, that, that is a fact. She sort of dropped it in. She said, I said, oh, you know, nice, nice feel here. And she said, yeah, well, that'll be the, uh, the ghost. Just dropped it in, that's all they've got to do. And then I was like, what? And I went, oh, yeah. That's what I've got to do, is it? So that's the legal thing. So <laughs> you drop it in. So in court, you go, did you drop it in? Yeah, I dropped it in. Play a record, you're an idiot. <laughs> David Gray, and this year's love, if you're in love. I hope it lasts. It's only January. Uh, what you got? What you got for us? I just thought we ought to maybe go through some of the emails. I mean, I don't want to query the caliber of some of the emails we get sent on this show, but, um, here's a typical one, Rick. Um, there's no name, it's just from Glicko. That's his email address. That's just a question to you, Rick. Did I see you walking around Marlebone High Street last Sunday? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, I, mean, I, I was in Marlborough High Street last Sunday, yeah. Yeah, but uh, did you see Glicko? I didn't see Glicks. Okay. I didn't see the Glickster. Um, <laughs> All right. but, uh... All right, this is one from M. Ricky, what do you think of Richard Bacon's show? I can't decide if he's better than you. Uh, nor can I. Any thoughts? Nor can I. I can't help her out on that one. That sure. really, that's a really personal thing. She's got to dig deep. She's got to look at both of us. She's got to find out what she likes. Yeah. And then whether I provide more of that than <laughs> Baker's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Baker Foyle's brilliant. Yeah. I'm, I'm not <laughs> going to put myself up against him, so uh, I can't help you. Next, Steve, next. Well, there was, what, there was a lot of emails <coughs> last week uh, which were saying how much they enjoyed the Christmas specials. Thank you very much for that. That's very flattering. Cheers. There was also a couple. <laughs> 
There was one that it was a guy, I'm sorry that I've, I think I might have deleted it, but oh, I should have sent a, a reply because there was a guy from Canada saying, if there any chance you're around in March, whether you could pop in and have a surprise birthday dinner for his wife. Oh, God, why'd you keep that? <laughs> I know, well, I can't, that. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, you idiot. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I, I, you know, I don't, um, I really apologise for that. Yeah. Um, this is from Anne Marie. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven months old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes, it'll probably grow up all right. But there are it's some like, mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah. Driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. Yeah, but, but, what that I mean mean? Is, but what I mean is, there's, there's certain things that... I, I just think that there was a kid who grew up in our, in our avenue, right, on the estate, who, when it was born, right, we kind of thought, it's got no chance, this kid, because its man was, was a bit of a rumen. Um... You know, a woman, the, where, where's that? No, just, just like, you know, she like going out and having a fag and like having a drink and she's never at home. It's the one who had the, the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. <laughs> sure. It's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it? If you want to find out about the horse in the house. <laughs> but, uh, she had a kid and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good looking kid. Which yeah. was a surprise because like, you know, the man wasn't that good looking, the dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out. And she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, look at this I've had. And <laughs> she, was, she was chuffed with it, because it's probably, like, one of the newest things she's ever had, because everything else was always sort of... Second hand. Second down and what have you, but suddenly she's got this brand new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went... <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> <laughs> it, looked, it looked rough already, right? And... All that, that just happened because that's, that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it used to, it had, like, a patchy head. Um, it's a... It, it what? It had a patchy head? A patchy head. It's just sort of... Uh, sort it of wasn't, it, it wasn't a North American Indian. What do you mean, a uh, patchy head? Just, just his hair was patchy. He used to chase, sort of, cars and stuff. <laughs> it's cars! It's, sorry! It's, what, what do you mean? It just, that's what he did for his... Sorry, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. But, but all I'm saying is that, at the end of the day, <coughs> what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least you can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> okay, right. Did no, you? that time when I was in, in <coughs> Wales and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that. Yeah. And I just picked up a big rock, right? Chucked it off the edge and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed a fellow was walking down below. Jeez. And I missed his head by, like, inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or, like, off a cliff or anything. And right? it only took one man to almost lose his life for you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons, Yeah. Isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, Hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm going to chuck this off here. I just picked it up and chucked it. And, like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. <laughs> that's a little mantra. Right? All right. You okay. live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that, <laughs> but let it roam about. <laughs> Great. There's the advice for you, Anne Marie. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven month old baby roam about. <laughs> Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. Um, and they just, they, they can't comprehend how, well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's reassuring, I think. You know, we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. It's philosophy, isn't it? It's, yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Because um, there's a... I read on the email, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb, 
Um, it's something about everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent. And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there. And that I like the Chinese. There's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about um, too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. Why, well, why is well that's I don't know I don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but I heard it was too many cooks. Well, it was all it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but it's just you know it's just it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let you let twelve people in a room have their say it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised, whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? I, this is, it. I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. <laughs> well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other, I'm, I'm going to throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them, okay? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? Wh wh how could you improve it? Like, the camel, you'd go lose the app. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um... And, and give it some bones, because I don't understand all this. It getting in a jar is is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says. Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. <laughs> no, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones. But you... I don't know why it want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've you've said you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? Oh, God, I love it. You can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution, making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe. Um, what what are they adding to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world. No, but, is I, thought, it? but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot. The, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like. Do you it's, think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? There's I'm a just lot saying of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah. So and you want you want you 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 get it down to like eight animals that represented all of them. So all you, okay. Who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, I mm. would have gone like, hang on a minute. With, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown and have a clear out. <laughs> but he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, to yeah. be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be, so you believe with Noah management. as well? You, well believe, you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to to cage two of every species? You actually believe that as fact, do you? Well, it's, it's out there in book form. Um, Brilliant. Uh, all right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. Oh, Jim! See that monkey music! <laughs> there was this um, airline, and um, it was having a lot of problems, and, and a what, lot of pilots the... too tall. Yeah, the cabin was so tiny. Only bananas were allowed in the cockpit for fuel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. there, there was a lot of strikes going on, right? Sure. Because um, I don't know what it was about. It was over money or whatever. Yes. And the well, get get someone that doesn't need money. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. but well, but what else could you pay something in? Well, Rick, can we peanuts. Make so, okay, peanuts or fruit, yeah. so anyway, the, the boss of the airline, the, oh. he had like one pilot who he could trust, right? And that was his son. Right. But the problem is with a lot of these planes, 
mm. you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he's like, if only I had two sons. But he didn't. There's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. Is as, it, as, a, he runs an airline? He runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads. But the problem is a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that oh, he's struggling here. We but how can they... Yeah. Well, just, just close it down. No, anyway, well, you can't do that, no, can't, Of course you can't. It's costing them a fortune just, if he closes it down. Yeah, yeah but what, one plane's not going to make a difference in an airline, is it? No, 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 it's oh. all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. So, the son... He's mm. flying the planes and that. He's getting worried for his dad because of his business. It's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't though. worry about it. We've found someone who you can work with. He said he's staying over near the sort of quarantine area where oh. all the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right. Okay. They won't be looking in there. They won't no. bother. No. So he's like, all right. Uh, but there's no animal you. that could be a co-pilot. That's why. I'll see you. Uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. Like, he'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah. Sure. So anyway... He gets in there, he meets them. At first, a little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with, but Why? he's thinking, as long as I can keep my dad's business alive, I can Not keep with one a job. Plane. Everyone's happy. Then one day, mm. what happens is a little bit of a, a, bit of a problem. Oh, uh, dear. Well, what oh. happened is uh, one woman who was on the, on the plane got a bit peckish. Right. right. And said, uh, said to the air hostess woman, said, I'm a little bit peckish. Have you got any sort of nibbles and that? She went, uh, no, I've got, got a sandwich. She said, I don't really want a sandwich. You want some, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just like nuts. a bag of nuts or something. Nuts, well, are, yeah. are they not giving those out yet? So, no, they don't give it for some reason. She was like, look, we've, we've stopped giving out the nuts. We can get you That's a sandwich. Strange. And the woman's yeah. like, I don't want a sandwich. Yeah. I just want some nuts. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. A sandwich is quite a big meal. And I just yeah. want some nibbles. Want some nuts. Well, it's not, that's not available. So Done. Can't, End of story. Can't so she said, well, you're saying there aren't any nuts. She yeah. said, but earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit. Right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes, and two bags of nuts. Right. She said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilot's getting Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So, Let's go home. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself, because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. He can't have eaten we them can't. yet. I want you some. Say you can't go. No, no. I know this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen. Yeah. I'm going to go over because no, I feel no, like I'm going to lied to. No, you can't. So she goes, so no, and no then the way. pilot can well, hear all this in anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door. Yeah. Right? She gets a glance in. Yeah. The monkey's sat there with headphones. Fucking <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> White Stripes fell in love with a girl, XFM 104.9. Five past one. Of a Saturday, that's what DJs say. Of a Saturday, yeah. Yeah, of yeah. a Saturday. <laughs> fast approaching. Yeah, time fast approaching ten past one. <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean it's fast approaching? What's it speeding up, is it? <laughs> time speeding up as it gets towards ten past two. Shut <laughs> up. Ricky Gervais, obviously. With him, Steve Merchant. Yeah, and Carl Pilkinson. Don't forget Carl P, Carl P the K-Man. He's, pe he's growing on people, people now. Love him. People love people him. People were thinking, oh, God, oh, he's, he's too much. Now they're going, they love him. Like, same as you. I mean, they oh, they still think you talk a little bit too much, but, I mean, they love Carl, <laughs> and, you know, but, uh, I shouldn't say that, because, it, it, you know, it'll rock your confidence. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. No, no, I am a man of nerves. In, sorry, I'm sidetracked, Rick, because I'm looking on the internet here, on the website for XFM. Yeah. Because I was, well, partly bored, but also I was looking on the other day. Nothing I said, though, was it? No, 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 <laughs> right. no. And, uh, there were some people, uh, commenting on the show. Yeah. And one person on there, I'm trying to find it, I don't want to misquote them, but yeah. basically, as far as I remember, they said that, uh, we knew even less about the music than the DJs that are on in the week. Right. That's, I think that is scientifically impossible. Yeah. So they've embarrassed themselves. Exactly. I think, I, I think it's impossible. You can't know less than the people that are on I, I the don't week. think so. It's, like, I, it's just, I it's mean, like, like it's I'm trying to multiply zero. You yeah. just end up with zero. It yeah. doesn't make sense. I checked with Steve Taylor, the man with the knowledge. Mm. Um, he should know. But I later. pretty, I don't think that, that's really annoying. But it's so annoying because I tell you this, we are passionate about the music and we do know what we're talking about. Yeah. Just because we don't read the back of the CD box. No. Like, I'm playing play the account. list we're given with the, the nine CDs that are on the playlist every month. There's a piece of paper here. The car's <laughs> looking at me like he's thinking, oh no, we're having a go. You've given away the magic <laughs> of the <laughs> You get pieces of paper here and they've got little bits of details, so for instance, White Stripes, this is the next single off White Blood Cells, February 2002. Now, it sounds like we know about the music. We yeah. We that off a piece of paper. Exactly. Whereas, when we say about music and we're wrong, at least we- it's cause we didn't know. Exactly. See? Look at the All-Stars. The All the All. So, can I just- I don't, I don't want to criticise there, but if I was listening and I'd enjoyed that track and I yeah. wanted to know what it was, I wouldn't have understood what you just said. Really? There. Could you just say that again? Low fidelity all stuff. Yeah, low fidelity because you went low fidelity, wasn't it? I was doing all D I was doing me DJ. Talk, no, it's just I'm you didn't know that. Your mouth wide. I can't be bothered. No, sure. It's uh, it takes too much. Look at that. Listen to him crinchling his little crinchling. <laughs> crinch, you're not crinchling. You're not crinchling your jaffa cakes, are you? It wasn't going out on air. No one knew. 
Yeah. I bet you're one of those people in cinemas that think you're being really quiet eating a bag of crisps, aren't you? Do you go to cinemas? Mmm, I'm in for a bit, actually. What Tell do you do, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Carl! What's an entertaining evening for you? Yeah. What would you do to occupy your time? Uh, my... <laughs> your hobbies, for instance. <laughs> my... might get a video out from prime time. Right, what, 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 would you enjoy that or would it just be a chore for you? No, no, I think things like that. Would you really hate doing that? That's, that's when you really switch off and you forget all your problems and stuff. Well, you, you haven't got any you problems. You haven't got any problems, Carl. You, you haven't know that. I put on a face when I'm with you. <laughs> you wear a mask. <laughs> Are you crying inside, This Carl? is you being the happiest you can be. You're like a clown, aren't you? Oh, Do you it's... think I'm like a hard, miserable man? Because there was somebody else I don't think you're hard. the other day. <laughs> And like I said to him, I can't watch the Elephant Man because it's oh. get upset. <laughs> God, you're the best. You don't know you're doing it. You're no, the but best. Can you watch it? Um, it, well, always, when it gets that bit where they're carrying him through the village and, and messing about with his head. <laughs> <laughs> Would you know? My, this is true. My dad watched that once. I've never watched it. My mum and my sister and that were all quite moved by it. Almost oh. tears, thinking it was a wonderful example of man's inhumanity to man and yeah, all that. Yeah. And my dad just went, "Wouldn't he make an amazing novelty rucksack?" <laughs> And it achievement for film for me, and, and I've never had this sort Steve of Steve was thinking, he's not that ugly. <laughs> Blimey, here we go, we were laughing at Carl! Can we focus on one person at a time, Rick, please? <laughs> Let's destroy him first. Oh, God. Tell him what you said to me when that record was playing about the Jeff Cakes. He, he bought some Jeff Cakes, which was lovely, he went across the road and he handed out the Jeff Cakes, and then I went, oh, thanks very much. And then what did you say? I just remember learning at school, <laughs> um, I'm not like making fun of, of the illness, because it's not funny, but, um, the cure cancer. Jaffa cakes cure cancer. Not, not like fully. Right. <laughs> they just go some way to help him. Yeah. Do you know? Um. It'll, it'll sort of help. If if you've got it, you can't say right. Get me a load of Jaffa cakes. Right. But I think it sort of puts a bit of a stop to it if you haven't got it. Do you know what I mean? It's like having vitamin tablets. Is this medically proven? Should we get Doctor Fox down here to confirm that? <laughs> I can't. I can't. I actually can't cope. You are just play a record. Play a record. Can I just if anyone has ever survived cancer thanks to Jack Cakes, please call him. No, but I didn't say he that. He said and then he went it's the orange thing in it. And then he read he tried to read it. He said, I wonder if it's and he tried to read that this scientific name. I love doing this. That's my favourite one I've ever done. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, uh, really, really good. good. Mm. Yeah. Because I always had a problem with Gomez before because it always sounded like they were trying to sound like these world weary Tom Waits style gravelly voice guys. And they were twenty. And they were like fourteen, yeah. Yeah, but I mean that that's great. That's really good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, well done, boys. Yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Can I play an Elvis Costello track? You know, I'd love to bloody hear some Elvis Costello. Just saying that. Well, you know why? Because we met him and he's a lovely man. We did meet him, yeah. And uh, I, I don't wish him to show off. I remembered all the great songs he ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
one foot in the grave. <laughs> Ah. He knew he had to say it then, but he couldn't oh. just name all the characters. Oh, that's fantastic! And there's one foot in the <laughs> Oh, dear. That'd be brilliant. And there's The Office. I don't know. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> what, you're, you're putting us alongside one foot in the grave? Thing that's been going, like, ten years and one of those... You're, you're putting us alongside... It beat us, Steve. Get over it. <laughs> it beat us in the comedy awards. No, I was just saying that you're an identifiable face if you're at a Formula One event. You okay. know. Old. <laughs> Grumpy. One foot in the grave. Yeah, one foot in the grave, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, Carl, any thoughts before we move on? On anything we've said so far? Elvis Costello. Well, I'd like to play, um, Red Shoes. Are we ready yeah, for- Yeah, not yet, I'm just saying. What? Do you what? know who his dad is? Declus McManus. No, Declus Mc- I don't know his real Declan name. Declan McManus. He was a big band leader in the 50s or something, wasn't he? No, he was in the R. Uh, White's Lemonade ad. Yeah. Oh! Was he? Oh, oh no, okay. it's, so much, it's so much to do with that. Good, so we're catering there to the, uh, audience listening who are 50 and above. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, and I'm the target audience. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Ah, oh, whites, ah, whites lemonade. You must remember that. Never heard that. Oh, anymore. those, those chimps that drink tea. Oh. Once, right, in school, um, we had a French dictionary, and you know, um, ice cold co co coke on the back of my throat. Singing hello summertime, it's the real thing. Remember that? No. Oh, you were We translated that into French. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end of that story? Yeah. That's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. But I know it in French. Do it. But it doesn't make sense. We just literally did the word. Go on. Let the me word, word. I can't believe you it, remember it. It's tres fois, coke, sur le derriere, a mon gosh, chante, bonjour, est tu jump, celebrate. That's the only <laughs> French you know, isn't it? <laughs> it's not even French. We just did it word for word. It doesn't make any sense. Can you say another word of French? Le, can you quote Le Plume de ma tante. Can you, can you, can my you quote thing. anything else? Is there anything else you can quote other than that? Is there anything else you learned at school that you can remember word for word? No. Nothing. Le chat est sur le mur. I don't just mean French, I mean anything. English, maybe some, a, a bit what of poetry mean? that you can remember? Of course I can, yeah. Go on, quote a bit of poetry for me. Um, like what? Don't like, you remember. Like through on the window breaks, it is the east and Juliet is the sun, the rise west sun and kill the envious moon, it was already sick as well, anyway. What, what do you want? Doesn't really count. What, Shakespeare doesn't count? No, cause that's the right, everyone knows that one. Oh, going what then? What should I know? The Wind Hover by Gerald Manley Hopkins. <laughs> Oh, you can't do that one. I caught this morning's morning minion, Kingdom of Daylight, still thinking about Wonder Woman Falcon and his riding of the Hulk. Oh, no, no, no. We haven't done Carl yet. Wait a minute, K-Man. Anything you can remember from school that you learned that you had to maybe, uh, memorize? French. French. Not necessarily French, it could be <laughs> anything. Anything, anything you can remember. This can be anything you remember from school, apart from the orange stuff stops cancer. Yeah. It, it, it's not the cough that carries you off, it's the coffin <laughs> that carry you off in. <laughs> 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 